What up, Metal Wani? This is Dallas here with Dallas. It's a daily double dose of Dallas here in Metal Wani from Narcotic Wasteland. Uh, how the fuck's it going, man? Going well, sir. Good, good. Um, so we're here talking about the new album, Delirium Tremens, from Narcotic. Um, how are fans reacting to this new material so far? Well, the fans have been really digging it so far from what they've heard. Um, it actually, the full record will release uh, October, Friday the 13th. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, definitely everybody who has, you know, heard the one song that we kind of let out that was familiar with what we did, you know, our release in 2014 really dug it and and all that. So yeah. For sure. There is that kind of little bit edgy punk vibe in the new material. Because I've had a chance to check out the new uh, the new album, and for the in my I didn't get to review it for the for Metal Wani, but I personally fucking love it. Like it's it's brutal, it's straightforward, and it's pretty fucking relentless. Like it just punches you straight in the mouth and just keeps wailing on you the whole time. Thanks, man. Thanks. We worked really hard on it. Yeah, and you can tell it's, it's ironed out really well. And I don't know, I thought the production quality was really smooth, which is always a big point of contention for me in a lot of bands. Thanks. Yeah, you know, we wanted to we wanted it to be tight, but not, like, computer tight. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't have it, like, quantized and, anal like, gotta have that nice warm analog sound. Oh, yeah. Two bands all the way. <laughs> so uh, what kind of gear are you running, then? Well, for the record, I used, uh, for this record, I used the uh, Marshall JCM 900 100 watt master volume. And, uh, in the front of it, I just used it like an MXR overdrive pedal. And I, uh, acquired a couple of years ago a nice, uh, 800, JCM 800 cabinet that, um, had not, you know, had survived the years without getting too beat up and the speakers were in good, good shape. And, I did a taste test on all four of the speakers with a SM57 and said, oh, yeah, that one's good enough, and went for it. <laughs> nice. Pretty straightforward. Hell, yeah. Versus sitting there. I, I find, you know, as I get older, it just seems like the more direct, like the more contact I have with the actual amp, the better. You know? Yeah, makes sense. So, starting off, what was the first real setup that you ever had? Like, when you first started playing and performing? Well, when I first started performing, I had a <laughs> I had a crate G120 combo amp, <laughs> and I had a, uh, a Marshall 800 212 cabinet that I put under it, and uh, it was it was pretty decent for somebody getting started, you know. And uh, the other guitar player, he had like a PV renowned solo series with the same Marshall cabinet underneath it. I mean. You know, for a, like a band, you know, my my teenage years, it, it was pretty good. It was sufficient for what we were trying to do. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hey, when it works, it works, right? Yeah, you know, it was it. It's. I wish I still had that amp. Actually, it would make a great practice amp. I'm sure somebody out there might be able to help you out with that. Mm. So, um, how did growing up in Fayetteville impact you as a musician in the those early formative years? Like. Well, I come from a, quite a musical family. Uh, just about everybody either plays an instrument or they were in theater and acting or doing, like, crazy dance stuff. That was mostly the, the ladies in the family. All the guys, you know, played guitar, bass. My my cousin actually was probably one of the more influential guys because he played in rock bands back in the early 80s and stuff. And when I was a young kid, I would go over and watch him rehearse and, Next thing you know, the, you know, the drummer's like, hey man, you want to play the drums or whatever? So I started, I actually started out on the drums for the first like four years of me really getting into music. And, um, yeah, so, you know, that put all the, uh, you know, bad things about where I grew up aside. I mean, music was really the, the guiding light out of everything for a lot of us. And, um, and yeah, you know that that was really the beginning is, you know, going over to those rehearsals and those guys and watching those guys practice and that just you know I was like man I I want to do this and 
started messing around with the drums and then got really serious about it and then, you know, uh, started getting into some heavier stuff later on. And while I could play guitar a little, I never really practiced it. But when I got around 13 or 14, I just, that was all I, when I wasn't in school, that was like pretty much all I did for, you know, that's pretty much all I still do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, that, that's kind of how it all started. And, you know, and because of me, like, learning to play guitar and getting a band together and all that stuff, I got to meet a lot of other musicians in the area, and that was really cool. So how would you compare writing, or I guess is there a difference between in the dynamic when it comes to writing music with people you've known most of your life and that you grew up with? versus people that you've met throughout your career as you've grown as a musician? Um, I would say that, you know, my approach to whatever situation when it comes to writing is, is I, I just kind of, you know, I have some ideas that I think that they might like and I bring it to the table, and if they like it, cool. And, you know, if they don't, then that's cool. I'll just try to come up with something else. You know, that's always been my kind of approach to it, and, you know, uh, luckily, I've been very successful at uh, getting the, like, fuck yeah, I love it. You know, that's <laughs> that's kind of the goal. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm a practicing musician. I like to practice and try to get better at the instrument and, you know, scales and blah, 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 and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, all that shit's out the window. And really what I want people, you know, I'm, I'm going for the goosebumps. You know what I mean? I'm going for the tears. I'm going for the the angst, the hate, you know, that's what I like to try to bring across with the stuff that I write because, you know, music is one of those things that can actually do that, can actually, you know, somehow or another using the right notes can give somebody that feeling. And that's, it's just, it's still one of the strangest damn things about human beings if you think about it, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> A bunch of random notes can cause you to cry, punch a window, like, go screaming out into the street, all from just a different combination of notes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anything from total just, uh, you know, going completely ape shit to curling up into a ball. <laughs> Sometimes in the same song. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> you know, um... While I appreciate a band like Pink Floyd, for instance, I can't listen to it because sometimes it just depresses the shit out of me. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, it's really good, you know, but it just, I like, man, I can't do this right now. Just bumming me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's so good, you know, but like, still. Yeah, and then you have people who are like, uh, death metal's definitely more depressing than Pink Floyd, and would argue it's a lot more intense and emotionally um, draining than Pink Floyd. It can be. For me, death metal has always been kind of angry. Yeah. Which I like. Yeah, I think that's you what I'll hear. You know, I just, I don't get into music that's kind of, I don't know, I, I don't even know if ambiguous would be, the, would be the word, but just, you know, kind of flatline or whatever would be the best way, to, I guess. Yeah, a little just, directly pointed as death metal, I guess. But, you know, at the same time, like, I never judge, you know, I, I see other artists say stuff like, oh, it's all this and it's all that and it doesn't have any feeling to it, blah, blah, blah. I bet you somebody is totally getting off on whatever it is that other person doesn't get at all. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. And it's, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's good to keep an open mind. You know, if I don't, if it's if it's not doing anything for me, then I'm not going to waste my time. I'm definitely not going to waste my time commenting on it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I I can always respect that they're good at what they do and also respect the fact that it's probably just totally blowing somebody away, like, oh, my God, this is the best shit ever. And I'm fine with that. I mean, the world would be really boring if we all listened and loved the same stuff. You know what I mean? Hell, yeah. Definitely. So then, what do you want fans to take away from the new uh, the new album? Like, what do you want them to take away from your music, ideally? I just, I, I really uh, just hope they really enjoy it. And, you know, uh, some of the people that tapped in to the first one that really liked it, you know, I was getting messages saying, you know, 
man, you know, the, that song really hit home with me, like, kind of close, almost in an uncomfortable way, as far as just, you know, dealing with whatever problems they had, whether it be domestic violence or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's cool. I mean, that's what it's really all about, is like, it, it's, you know, it, it's, I'm talking about stuff that, you know, that I feel personally about. It can extend the reason that there's at least maybe one or two other people in the world that would relate to that, so. I mean, it's um, like a one in 7.2 billion chance, right? So I think you'd be, yeah, you might be able yeah, to help I mean, people. Yeah, if that <laughs> one person is just like, holy shit, this is awesome, then I'm mission accomplished, you know. I've connected with somebody, and that that's what it's all about. Definitely. Um, and so you guys are going to be hitting the road here pretty soon. Um, any big plans while you're on the road? Just um, playing the shows and trying to stay tight, stay in tune, and stay in time, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Those are Just put it out there and do the best that we can every night, and uh, we're going to be, you know, doing very soon here, we're going to be doing some pretty extensive rehearsals. I've been doing uh, quite a bit just on my own. Everybody's just been kind of working on our own before we get together. And uh, so that'll be it. And then, you know, we'll go out and do the best we can. And and uh, that's basically all you can do, you know, just put your heart and soul into it every night and practice, practice, practice. Yeah. So are you guys hitting any new dates that, or n new cities that, like, you've never been to? Um, I, we're going to Canada, and it's actually the, only the second time. Niall's only been to Canada once. So we're, we're going, we're doing a few more things in Canada, which is really cool. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, you know, pretty much the, the U.S. We're hitting some of, I think we're doing a lot, a little bit more in the Midwest than what, what I would normally be used to doing, which is cool. Hmm. So how is how would you say life has changed since leaving Nile? I imagine you guys had, were you guys were touring a bit and recording pretty regularly. Has as much really changed in your day to day? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I I, I have like a regular job now. Um, oh yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm driving the shit out of a forklift. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, uh, that's basically it, man. And, you know, it pays pretty decent, so I'm, you know, able to, you know, pay the bills and put a little bit of money back for this tour and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, and I, I you know, pretty much uh, all of us have jobs that we can kind of come and go. So, and I think it's really important, you know, at this point in the game, like, even if I was able to, like, completely sustain myself just playing music, I, I'm, I'm still going to have, like, a day gig because... I mean, what else am I going to do? Sit around, sleep all day? I mean, that's just not me, really. You got to stay busy? Yeah, I like to stay busy, man. And I, I read a, a pretty interesting article about some pretty successful artists, actually, that probably totally could just sustain themselves with music. They they uh, they clock in when they get off the tour, you know? <laughs> it's like... And it never hurts to have a little extra cash on hand. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, they're, you can never have too much money. We are in a monetary society, whether you like it or not, and oh. you know, that's just the way it is. And I don't, I don't mind it. You know, it's it keeps me kind of physically active too. And you know, I don't know. I've just, I've never minded having you know regular work. It's just never been a problem. And you never had to do that when you were with Nile, then, right? You were just too busy. Oh, uh, actually, in the early days we did. Oh, yeah. We would uh, be, you know, really burning the midnight oil. Like, there, I think the most I, I think the, the most I strung myself out was when I was playing drums in Lecherous Nocturne also. Oh. I was working in a warehouse doing the forklift thing, rehearsing Nile. We were getting ready to do, we were working on, uh, I think it was around the time of Annihilation of the Wicked, and I was rehearsing with Lecherous Nocturne. So basically, <laughs> I would work, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, and then go straight to the rehearsal room, and then stay out there until about, you know, I have to be at work at like 7 in the morning, and then I'd stay out there until about 1 in the morning, 
And then some of those nights I would come home and hop on Project Gotham Racing too and play online racing until about three or four. <laughs> 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 so I really didn't sleep um, during those times. And that was probably the most I had strung myself out. And I, I remember every now and then there would be a Sunday where I would just die. And I would just sleep like all day. I would just mm-hmm. wouldn't do anything but sleep because I was just beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brutal schedule. Yeah, man. You know, it was a uh, it was a fun time though. I mean, I, <clears throat> being tired won't kill you. It'll make you feel like you want to die sometimes, but you know, it's just one of those <laughs> kind of. In a way, I think being tired and the whole sleep thing is uh, is somewhat can be uh, somewhat of a mental dependency and. You know, some, when I sleep, I sleep really hard. But, you know, I try to stay busy. Oh, yeah. So, um, a lot of people out there are probably still wondering, what actually led to you parting ways with Nile? Well, it's a really long story, and I've had a lot of time to think about it. And, you know, I can just... I can just honestly say to myself and to whoever that it, it really was just time. It was just time for me to do some different things, um, musically and otherwise. I just, I needed a change in my life. And that's, that's the, really the only thing I can say about it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure those guys are probably working on a new record right now. I'm really excited to see what they're going to do and, and hell yeah, you know, maybe we'll cross paths out there at some point. <laughs> Narcotic Wasteland and the Nile Tour, I could see that going down. <laughs> Moving forward from here, after your tour dates, uh, after that tour kicks ass and goes well, like I'm sure it will, uh, what are your plans from from there? Well, very soon we're going to be uh, getting into some serious discussions with our booking agent about 2018, and... Uh, well, hopefully we can uh, get, you know, get uh, get like a European tour or something going on. We'll see what happens. I mean, at this point, it's just like the band is, even though it's been around since 2014, you know, we haven't had a really a chance to go out and do anything. Not only was I very busy, but, you know, the other guys were busy doing things too. So, you know, we're finally we've got a window here where we can actually go out and do it. And um, so we'll just see what happens from here, but... We definitely have some offers for some things in 2018, but it's too early to tell what will, you know, what will be feasible. So, any particular artists or bands that you would be particularly interested in going on tour with or collaborating with at some point in the future? I would really like to do a tour with Hideous Divinity. Ooh, yeah, and uh, I, make that you know, uh, I did uh, I did some guest vocal tracks for them few years back and uh had heard of the band before but then heard the material and it was just like oh yes you know i mean for for death metal i think that they're one of the you know they're definitely one of the ones that are still kind of pushing the limits on it you know and uh uh there's also a band called Svart crown that i find is a really fucking awesome younger band that's like it's really brutal death metal, you know what I mean? It's, I'm familiar. Oh, I love that band, dude. They're fucking yeah. killer. They're super badass. Yeah, they're one of my favorites right now um, for for newer stuff. And you know, so, you know, I see a lot of people saying stuff like, "Oh, you know, nobody ever touched like the early '90s death metal." And you know what? It was a very special golden time. And yes, I do agree that there. It seemed to be a little bit more about the riff and less about the tech. But there's still some bands out there that are about the riff. And th- these two bands that I just said are two of those bands that are newer bands. And it's definitely, yeah, there might be some killer technique and stuff like that. But, I mean, just because somebody's good at what they're doing doesn't mean the songs that they write are tech. True. Very true. You know, they're just, they just, you know, didn't want to be, they didn't want their fingers and hands to be limited. They didn't want their mind to be limited because their fingers and hands won't cooperate. And that's why you, you know, that's why you learn how to do this stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
it just makes everything easier when you have a uh, idea come through your brain. It's like, oh, okay, I can actually maybe do that with some with some practice mm-hmm. instead of I'm you know I've heard guitar players say, oh, I hear stuff in my head all my time. There's no way I can play it. Well, if you practice, you might be able to. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, it's usually how that works. You want to master any skill, you just give it time. It's really the secret. yeah. Just stay on it, man. You know. Yeah. It's not gonna hurt. No. I mean, if you play long enough, it might hurt, but it hurts in a good way. The nude, like decrepit birth. It's pretty techy. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I I was really impressed with that. That and actually, I really liked the new suffocation too. I thought that was killer. Yes. Your suffocation was awesome. Lots of fast peaking and just brutalness overall, and just it's got a great vibe to it. Definitely. And I heard they put on, I heard that live they absolutely nailed it too. Yeah, man, you know, I, every time, I, I just refuse to read any comments ever, ever again, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of hard if it shows up in your news feed or whatever. Yeah. It's just like, come on, man. You know, I think some people just want to hate on everything just because their lives fucking suck. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would agree with it's that. It's like, are you just going to analyze everything until all the joy is drained out of it? It's like, just quit. Just stop that shit. You know, it's just like, what is the point in that? Just walking around shitting on everything all the time. It doesn't matter if it's a band or a video game. You know, it's just like, do you like anything? Why don't you just fucking end it? Just die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> now you're bumming everybody out. Go away. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? You know, it, 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 and it's just somebody standing up on a soapbox being like, trying to be somebody, trying to get recognized. Well, I think this and I think that. Who gives a fuck? Who the fuck are you? Alright, well, I believe that's about it for me. Um, I always like to give people a chance to shout out anybody they anybody they want, or a chance to yell at anybody, harass anybody, talk shit, whatever you want to do. Oh, wow, okay. Just uh, say whatever. Yeah, just a little open air for you. Hmm. Well, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> We're prepared for that one, huh? Mmm, just say whatever. Mmm. Oh, God. All right, movie references. Go away. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, shit. I don't know. I'm just going to keep it simple and real, man, and just say, you know, thanks to everybody out there that's, you know, supported me or been a fan of any band that I've been involved in, whether it be now or then, just really thank you very much. It's a huge inspiration for me to continue doing this, and I I think it's just, I think that the heavy metal community is one of the finest communities in the world, and it has some of the coolest people in it that you meet all over the world, and I just... I love the fact that all of us in this community get along together so well and have so much fun together and love each other so much when there's so much of the rest of the world that, uh, you know, fucking killing each other. Yeah. So, so hails, hails to all of you. Whether you like what I do or not, you are part of the community and I love you. Fuck yeah. I think that's probably the best way to wrap that up that I can think of. Cool, man. Awesome. Hey, I, I appreciate the fuck out of you and everything you've done in the metal community and music-wise. Um, appreciate you giving us your time, sitting down with us for a second and chatting. Well, uh, about 45 minutes. <laughs> but awesome, dude. Yeah, man. Anytime, dude. It was a great, great chatting with you, and uh, I'll be seeing you pretty soon. <laughs>